We've arrived. UFC 300, a star-studded event is upon us. Stay locked in, my brothers. Fasten those seatbelts. We've got 13 fights to discuss, and the first fight of the night comes in at 135 pounds. We've got Bantamweights. We've got Davison Figueredo taking on Cody Garbrandt. Cody Garbrandt, who, man, that brutal knockout loss to Kai Kara France doesn't look very good right now. You look back, you look back at Cody Garbrandt. He was at, able to catch lightning and a bottle against Dominic Cruz. What a magnificent performance, but that feels like light years ago. And on the other side of this fight, you have Davison Figueredo, who comes off of a win over Rob Font and Brandon Moreno. Peace, my brother. I hope you're doing well um, in what is a quasi retirement. Figueredo back on the horse here. And what I see in this fight is a whole lot of fainting going on, baby. Expect a whole lot of fainting going on. Um, I expect Cody Garbrandt to be using his feints, Davison Figueredo to use his feints. And you look at fight doesn't go the distance sitting at minus 180. I think that these two valiant warriors are going to have a feeling out process inside of the octagon. And there will be a mutual level of respect until Davison Figueredo lands something on Cody Garbrandt. That is when I believe that all hell's going to break loose, and Figueredo is going to use his use his warrior spirit to come out on top here in a number of regards. I think that he has the not only killer instinct here, but he has the better chin. He has the knockout power and the ferociousness that is needed to put out Cody Garbrandt. And we've seen lesser fighters put out Cody Garbrandt before under the bright lights, knowing that there's a $300,000 bonus waiting for whoever is able to come out with these win bonuses. Um, I believe that Figueredo is going to be putting his best effort forward there. So give me Davis and Figueredo here. Now, I will say that there are no certainties in this game, and you must realize that Figueredo does take a lot of risks and puts himself in harm's way to land these strikes. Give me Figueredo to win. Next up, Bobby Green taking on Jim Miller at 155 pounds. Jim Miller is back, and he told you that this day would come. Look at Bobby Green. Look at his loss to Jalen Turner. He pounded into the canvas multiple times. Bobby Green has seen better days. Jim Miller, although he's beaten marginal competition recently, he does still possess some level of a skill set that is worrisome for Bobby Green in that if this fight does hit the mat, I expect Jim Miller to do a little bit of a number on Bobby Green. Now, if this fight takes place on the feet for an extended period of time. Don't be surprised to see Bobby Green start to pick Jim Miller apart. There's a significant gap in quickness. And Bobby Green, yes, he's still quick. He's still spry. But that chin has taken some serious bombs recently. Bobby Green has been melted numerous times and Jim Miller you know he's got those leg kicks I was at his bout against Dustin Poirier and you saw that Jim Miller still can crack but I suspect at some point during the 15 minutes that this bout is scheduled to take place within um, Jim Miller finds himself in a dominant position on the mat and wreaks havoc here I'm going to be picking Jim Miller to walk away victorious at UFC 300 in front of a raucous T-Mobile arena crowd. So give me Jim Miller in that matchup. Next up, where we have Jessica Andrade taking on Marina Rodriguez in a matchup that pits a marauder in Jessica Andrade. And she's taking on a Muay Thai fighter who has come out of Bloodsport. Go watch Bloodsport. I'm going to post after this, uh, after this breakdown a gif of a character that mimics marina rodriguez rodriguez coming off of the victory over michelle waterson now adraj 
has a significant grappling edge here. She's, she's going to have to close the distance inside of the larger octagon, which could be a bit of a challenge here. Can Andrade do that? Is that Jessica Andrade's game here? Does she want to take this fight to the mat? Is she comfortable trading blows at distance? I was also at Jan Jaunan's fight versus Jessica Andrade, and we saw Jan Jaunan take out Jessica Andrade via strikes. That is the potential path to victory here for Marina Rodriguez. And you must be honest with yourself when you break down each and every fight. Take a look at each side of each fight. And when you look at Marina Rodriguez, you can see that she does, if we're talking distance striking here, have a significant edge. Also in the clinch, be wary of those knees coming up the middle. Adraj, the much stronger fighter, bull-like fighter who has the ground game that we mentioned. Also, when it's when we talk about strength, there's a significant discrepancy in strength here. I'll be I'll be picking Jessica Andrade to walk away victorious despite me betting on Yan Zhao Nan to beat Jessica Andrade last time out. And there being a clear skill set difference in striking on the feet. Marauder in Andrade. I think that the ferociousness of Andrade is going to be the difference maker. Give me Jessica Andrade to walk away victor victorious. And she's sitting at minus 130. Can you trust Jessica Andrade at this price? Are you willing to take that risk? I may be. Let's see. Welcome, Danny. Great to have you. Woo! We've got Evan in the house. Thank you for showing up. Steven, mucho grosso. Thank you for joining us on this festive evening. JP, we've got you in the house. Let's talk Jalen Turner against. Money Moicano, Hanato Moicano coming off of a victory over Drew Dober. And Drew Dober had his moments there. He was within a 50 50 position of walking away victorious, but he was not able to come out on top. Hanato Moicano used his ground game to walk away victorious, but there were some sketchy moments there. And you look at Jalen Turner, look at the loss that he took at the hands of Vicente Luque. Jalen Turner has been knocked out numerous times. I believe that this is a volatile matchup, and the odds, my odds here are not correct. Jalen Turner is not a minus 130 betting favorite here. I'm looking at this right now, minus 205. Minus 205 at the betting window for Jalen Turner. And you see the odds closing. And I understand why they're closing because Hanato Moicano is a legitimate threat. As soon as he is able to grab hold of Jalen Turner, it may not take much to take Turner to the ground. I think that that is, that is the path to victory here. But is Jalen Turner ready to throw down? And ready to land a potential fight-ending strike. And I believe that he has the potential to do that. I think that he could do that. I believe in Jalen Jalen Turner's ability to land strikes on the feet. But as soon as this fight hits the mat, I expect Moicano to come alive. Now, I think that Moicano may have his moments. But I, I see this fight making its way back to the feet. And Jalen Turner ending this fight via knockout. Give me Jalen Turner to walk away victorious. Now, we're going to be talking Diego, Loca, Diego Lopez versus Sadiq Youssef. But before we do that, we have a number of commentators joining us on this stream at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We've got Eric. Eric, I appreciate you coming back to Twitter and joining us on this festive evening. Lou, thank you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let's go. Big Pretty. Is Big Pretty picking Money Boy Kano? That is, that is the question here. That is the question. I think that we have a, a fight that is going to uh, take place on the mat as well as on the feet and may the best man win. Diego Lopez versus Sadiq Youssef. Youssef. Man, how much is how much has the loss to Edson Barbosa taken out of Sadiq Youssef. I was on Sadiq Youssef in that fight. We saw he came out of the gates, guns blazing, ready to set the tone. And he sure as hell did set the tone on Edson Barbosa, but could not finish the job. 
He could not finish the job, and he had multiple rounds to do so against an aging Edson Barbosa. And look at the other side of this fight. You've got Diego Lopez, who is like a lo locomotive careening towards, towards the top 15 of this division at 145 pounds. And man, although Sadiq Yosef is the more composed fighter, the more technical fighter, the better striker, Man, Diego Lopez, I see him making this fight messy, looking for a potential scramble where he finds the back of Sadiq Youssef and puts in a rear naked choke to take out Sadiq Youssef. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm breathing it in as I as I walk through this breakdown because I am I am a big fan of Sadiq Youssef and his well-rounded skill set. And I see holes in Diego Lopez's game. But give me Diego Lopez. I believe that Diego Lopez has much more to offer at this stage in his respective career. And the path to victory on the mat must not be um, toyed with. It must not be toyed with. You watch the Mozart and Fluev matchup against Diego Lopez, and you see, you see right in front of your eyes that Diego Lopez means he means business, and he's not willing to give up on himself. And look at Sadiq Youssef. If he gets rocked, and we've seen him get rocked multiple times. We've seen him give up on himself during fights. Oh, goodness gracious, I'm going to be picking Diego Lopez in that matchup. Now, Kayla Harrison taking on Holly Holm. Holly Holm coming in as a plus 360 underdog, and she's taking on a Kayla Harrison who it looks like Kayla Harrison has been eating her Wheaties. It looks like she's taken her strength and conditioning extremely serious. Kayla Harrison made weight, made 136 pounds. How the hell did she make 136 pounds? That is a question I ask of you, but she did it. And she looked like she filled out at the ceremonial weigh-ins. What's going to happen in this matchup? Holly Holm sporting a six pack, sporting a 42 year old human body as she enters this octagon. And I have to roll with Kayla Harrison here, but how much did that weight cut take out of her? That is the question I ask of you. We know there are no certainties in this game. We've seen people gas out under the bright lights in their UFC octagon debut. Is that going to happen here? You are right. It must not be toyed with flags. Oh my goodness. It's gorgeous. So I get back to this Kayla Harrison. One thing she did mention in the pre-fight speech, she's going to utilize Elbows. Look for elbows to be in full effect when she's in top position, splitting Holly Holm wide open. I expect that to happen. I expect Kayla Harrison to walk away victorious. That minus 460 betting line is wide because we don't know exactly what we're getting here. But we are getting an Olympic champion. But this isn't the Olympics. This is the eight-sided UFC octagon. Give me Kayla Harrison to win and to win inside the distance. Perhaps we'll see Holly Holm walk away and leave her octagon, leave her gloves inside the octagon. Now, Aljamain Sterling taking on Calvin Cater. Calvin Cater plus 140, Aljamain Sterling minus 160. This is the featherweight debut for Aljamain Sterling. Aljamain Sterling, he's going to have to close the distance in order to win this fight. That is a arduous task against Calvin Cater. Now, Calvin Cater coming off of the ACL injury, he blew out his ACL against Arnold Allen and it's been a it's been a long time since we've seen him inside the octagon. I I liked how Calvin Cater bounced back against a brutal loss to Max Holloway and we'll talk about Max Holloway in a little while against Justin Gaethje but here Aljo going to need to find this fight on the mat. He's going to have to get this fight to the mat and I suspect he may run into a buzzsaw on the feet against Calvin Cater. I'm going to pick Aljamain Sterling here, but I'm not willing to lay minus 160. I think this is a show-me-something spot for Aljamain Sterling. I want to see what he has to offer here at 145 pounds. Without a belt on the line, he's going to have to go for it. Show me something, Aljo. Show me something. Give me Aljo. Now, Yuri Prohoshka taking on Alexander Rakic. You're right. You're gosh darn right. Questions will be answered. Questions will be answered. Yuri Prohoshka 
Alexander Rakic. Alexander Rakic, long layoff. Also, knee injury uh, against Jan Blahovic. And Prohoshka coming off of a loss, coming off of a title fight. Something to consider here. What's the motivation? But Yuri Prohoshka is a martial artist, a pure martial artist. I believe, by the way, let's pause in reflection of tonight's card and cheers to everyone out there as they consume a beverage. <sighs> tasty, tasty. Less than 24 hours, my brothers. Yuri Prohoshka taking on Alexander Rakic in a what's considered a pick em at this stage. Yuri was the betting underdog at one point. Now, we know that Prohoshka is a bit of a wild man out there. We've seen him come up short. He's a volatile fighter who is willing to draw you in. And gosh, watch the C.B. Dalloway fight. You want to get the blood flowing? You want to get the blood flowing tonight? Go watch C.B. Dalloway against Yuri Prohoshka. Man, that was a beatdown. Now, I don't think this fight's going the distance. I'm going to be picking Yuri Prohoshka, who was an underdog. Now he's moved to a slight favorite here. But this is as volatile a matchup as it gets because Rakic is a composed fighter, and he wants a composed fight. I've seen his head and his equilibrium thrown off many times. So I don't trust Rakic's chin. And it looks like this weight cut took a lot out of him. I'll be picking Prohoshka in that matchup. Now, you want to talk a cupcake matchup? What the hell is Cody Brundage doing inside of the UFC octagon on a main card against Bo Nickel? Why is this fight happening? By the way, Bo Nickel minus 1,600. Cody Brundage plus 850. Bo Nickel to win inside the distance? I believe I just saw minus 1,300. Fight doesn't go the distance? Minus 1,400. Bo Nickel, money line, minus 1,600. So, hmm, do the math there. Where do you see value? Wow, under one and a half, minus 350. How are you willing to play this fight? Do you believe that Bo Nickel is going to win this fight via submission? Do you see him winning this fight via TKO? I see a multitude of ways that Bo Nickel could win this fight, but it's basically due to Cody Brundage giving up on himself inside the octagon. Cody Brundage, a fortunate fighter to walk away with a winning streak here headed into this fight against Bo Nickel. And he better count his lucky stars that he's competing under the bright lights on a UFC main card. Wow. So UFC 300 main card. <sighs> Give me Bo Nickel inside the distance. I'm not willing to play that chalk. I'll be uh, looking to watch this fight with, a, with an adult beverage in my hand and I will be cheering Bo Nickel on. I see the talent here. There is a ridiculous slow build that's happening here, but come on, give Bo Nickel some legitimate competition. We coming for heads. That is right. That is right. You lags, you are onto something. I feel the emotion. By the way, God, goodness gracious, Armin Sarukian, Charles Oliveira. We are working our way through this breakdown. I'm barely containing my emotions as I look at the ceremonial weigh-ins. I look at the face-offs at the at the stare-downs that we had at the press conference. Sarukian, man, he thinks this is going to be a cakewalk. And he could potentially run through Charles Oliveira. But Oliveira is not going to walk quietly into the night. Oliveira is going to throw up submission after submission after submission attempt, and he will look to chain submissions. He knows Sarukian's going to try to put him on his back. And I see scrambles ensuing. I see this fight ending inside the distance. This is only scheduled for three rounds. I don't think it's going to hit the third round. I'm looking at an under one and a half here. I'm looking to play. Man, you know what? I think that Sarukian's going to knock Oliveira out. You look at the facial bones of Oliveira and how many brutal weight cuts he's had. But I am not ruling out Oliveira via submission. I also have seen what Sarukian is capable of inside of the octagon. Not only is he capable of winning, but also he's capable of getting caught. And he's, uh, he's capable of letting the emotions get the best of him. And that's something I am concerned about. So give me 
Sarukian inside the distance, but I believe the under one and a half is a better play here. I also could see an under two and a half in action, and I don't see this fight going the distance. I'll be rooting for Oliveira, but I think that time is starting to catch up to Charles Oliveira. Now, you... Oh my goodness gracious. JP, it's MMA Christmas. The excitement is palpable. You are correct. By the way, let's get to the BMF fight. Let's get to the BMF title on the line. And by the way, this is a fantastic matchup. Max Holloway moving back up to 155 pounds after that loss to Dustin Poirier a long time ago. And Gaethje, who is coming off of a win over Dustin Poirier, where he knocked Poirier's block off. And I will say this. Justin Gaethje is getting better and better and better every single time out. And he's becoming more composed. And those leg kicks that he possesses are going to be a threat at any moment. Once he starts landing those leg kicks, it may take three, may take four, may take five. And those are going to pay dividends. But when he lays into those leg kicks into the pocket... You know who's going to be waiting for him? Max Holloway, who's going to be landing two, three, four, five, sometimes six punch combinations. Justin Gaethje, yes, is still a punching bag. Go back, watch back the Eddie Alvarez fight. Watch back the Tony Ferguson fight. Watch back the Michael Johnson fight. There have been so many fights. The Fizia fight, there were moments where Gaethje, uh, you know, he, he gets caught at times, can get wobbled. The Michael Chandler fight, there have been so many others. Gaethje, his head... Moves like a Pez dispenser. He, he doesn't really roll with the punches. He gets his e equilibrium thrown off. And Max Holloway, yes, those three consecutive losses to Alex Volkanovsky. And Holloway been chewed up his face. He's been he's had the most amount of significant strikes landed on his face more than any other fighter in UFC history. What an incredible statistic. But I will say this. I think that there will be violence here. I think that Max Holloway is going to take one to give four or five or six or eight. And at some point, the volume is going to be a difference maker. I think that Gaethje's going to bank on chopping down Max Holloway. And Max Holloway, yes, uh, I don't think he's had, I know he's had some time to put on weight, but I don't think he's had enough time to put on a ton of weight here. I think that Holloway's going to walk away victorious, though. I believe in the underdog here, I think that he could potentially get cracked. And that's, Gaethje's path to victory. Gaethje, in my eyes, has to win via knockout here. I know that that Poirier and Holloway went five rounds. I think that Gaethje's going to have to stop Max Holloway here, and it, it's going to be a tall task to do that because Gaethje is not near the level of technical striker. And, and this is a theme here sometimes that the technical striker doesn't necessarily always win. The better fighter doesn't necessarily always win. But in this case, I believe that the technical striker, Max Holloway, will walk away victorious here. And you look at the odds, plus 126. I posted a few days ago that this line was in danger of flipping. And you watch, look at how it's closed from... Gaethje was minus 230, minus 250, now minus 146, and things are starting to close. Um, give me Max Holloway here. I believe this will become a war of attrition. And yes, another way that this fight could end, Dr. Stoppage. I could see if Holloway gets rocked and he starts eating punches and and there could be a potential premature, premature stoppage, but I believe that Holloway is going to walk away victorious here. Now, let's talk a wide line here. Uh, Wei Li Zhang taking on Yan Zhaonan. Yan Zhaonan plus 385 at the betting window taking on Wei Li Zhang who uh Wei Li Zhang minus 510. Yan Zhaonan the this fight does take place in the larger octagon. The more the cleaner striker here, Yan Zhaonan, especially when it comes to using the hands. Wei Li Zhang diverse fighter has a much better ground game, has the better cardio, has um, a will to win that is second to none. Wei Li Zhang coming off of a victory against Amanda Lemos where she showed us what she's made of. She could fight a very smart game plan. She's getting better and better and better. And Yan Zhaonan, this is an all-Chinese matchup. This is a fight that I've advocated for for years, and it's finally coming to fruition. So I love this fight. 
I think that Yan Jianan is live early. I say the first two, two and a half rounds, Yan Jianan comes alive. But the longer this fight goes, Wei Li Zhang is going to snuff Yan Jianan out. And I'll be picking Wei Li Zhang to win this fight. <sighs> Man, five rounds is a long time. A long time for these ladies. I th I'll pick Wei Li Zhang to win via decision, but I think that we are in for a barn burner early. I think that this is a very, very live bout for Yan Jiaonan early. Now, let's talk the 13th fight of the evening, where we have Alex Pejera taking on Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill coming in as a plus 110 underdog. Jamal Hill coming off of eight months ago, had torn his Achilles, and he had to have subsequently surgery and then go through rehab. So think about it. How long has he really spent time planting on these feet and getting his weight under him and throwing and building his cardio, etc.? Man, this fight, I do not see it going the distance. Minus 400 currently. Fight doesn't go the distance. I don't see it getting out of the second round. Pejera, minus 130. I see this is a fight where Pejera, the much better technical fighter, and you watch Jamal Hill, the way he fights, He's looking to counter. He's looking to, man, who is, you want to see him come out and lead the dance here against Pajero, who's waiting on you with that left hook. This is a dangerous fight for both fighters, and Pajero could get the leg kicks going. Here's what I think is going to happen. Although all signs are pointing to Alex Pajero winning this fight, I think that Jamal Hill is going to walk away victorious. It pains me to say this because you and I know deep in your soul that Magomed Ankalaev is the best light heavyweight champ, best light heavyweight fighter on the, on the planet. He is the uncrowned champion, but he's not competing tomorrow night. So we have to choose here. We have to choose and I'll be picking Jamal Hill to walk away victorious, but I see Alex Pejera getting out early. I see him leading the dance and looking great early. And then I, I think that Jamal Hill is going to land something that's going to hurt Alex Pajera, and he's going to shut the lights off of Jamal Hill. But I, I could see, I could see Pajera winning this fight. Also, I think that uh, the under three and a half is uh, solid. Under two and a half, solid. I don't see this fight getting out of the second round. I think that both of these fighters are going to come looking for blood. Thirteen fights, thirteen fights. There you go. You got all my, all my picks. I am I am picking Jamal Hill to come with an underdog winner here. I I think that Andraj and Rodriguez could end inside the distance. I'm going to be looking forward to all of the action here. I want to wish you a fantastic fight day tomorrow. Go get what's yours. Enjoy UFC 300. This is what life's all about, my brothers. Feel it. Do what you love. Get after it.